Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to show you how I painted a Legion of the Damned Space Marine, including a little bit of conversion work from the Chaos Master of Executions? Lord of Executions. Chaos Axeman, one of them. It's a pretty airbrush-centric tutorial, so if you don't have an airbrush, you can do all of these things by brush, by just glazing, and just carefully sort of going through the motions with your paintbrush to ensure you get some nice smooth blends across the board. Now, if you're interested in a tutorial where we do this by brush, then stay tuned because there's one coming to the channel very soon where we paint a Space Marine Chaplain. So lots of black power armor and so on. Might be useful for your black Templars, perhaps. But that's coming out soon. We've also got a video already on Patreon for how to do the freehand flames and flaming skull on the shoulder of this guy, uh, which you also can see on the axe as well. So check that out too. I'll put a link in the video description below. But for now, let's get to it. So let's get to it. Let's build this mini. This is the Master of Executions, aka Chaos Axeman, in all his glory. And this was a giveaway mini over on Twitch. So if you'd like a chance to win a mini, then check out the Twitch links in the description below. Every month we give away a mini that I paint. You could win. We're using some stuff from the Space Marine Reaver sprue. We've got a pistol and one of the heads. A, I wanted a skull head. And B, to be honest, with the slightly upscaled Chaos Marines that you've got now, the Primaris stuff fits a lot better than the older stuff, and I figured that would make the most sense to use. We also started cutting off some of the Chaos iconography. Whilst this guy does need to look a little bit like a badass with some extra detail here and there, we didn't want it to just be a Chaos Marine with a different paint scheme. So by removing some of the spiky bits, some of the like eyes and things that you found on his armor, it makes the whole thing look a little bit neater and better. Using a sharp hobby knife, get rid of those. Then these sanding sticks, which are amazing. There's a link in my Discord, actually, if people want to pick these up. Then you can remove all of that sort of thing. So we just took our time, got through that nice and carefully, and then we need to start removing things like the hand holding the severed heads. Now, if you're enjoying this video, why don't you go ahead and give it a cheeky thumbs up. If you really like it, hit the subscribe button and the bell button as well to be notified when the content goes live. It's pretty much weekly on a Thursday, though. As with any kind of conversion, just test fitting several times before you glue. It's really, really important. So we made sure we got everything nice and neat and tidy, glued everything in place, and then undercoated the guy with the airbrush using some Vallejo Black Airbrush Primer. This stuff's great, I like it. It doesn't leave any sort of texture on the model at all. It gives a nice smooth coat without there being any chance of uh, like just something going a bit wrong. Then we took some Thamar Black and some Incubi Darkness, mixed those together in a four to one ratio or one to four ratio, and just gave the entire model a base coat of that. This is gonna give us a nice start to our black. I prefer black to be a little bit blue to give it a bit more contrast, to make it look more interesting. And so to do that and to push the blue, we added the fang and came in with some more highlights. Now I'm gonna do one more highlight on top of this with some administratum gray. And then I'm gonna talk you through exactly how I do my highlights on any Space Marine model. In fact, pretty much on any model, in fact. Here's one that you might want to pay attention to. So let's talk for a second about why I place my highlights exactly where I place my highlights. This is something I get asked fairly often, so I thought let's do a proper explanation of this in this video. If we take the mini and divide it into the top and the bottom half, and then on the bottom half, we put our highlights predominantly towards the bottom of the miniature. This is gonna give us some really nice separation between our miniature and our base. By putting our highlights towards the bottom, it means that on things like the miniature's grieve and his feet and so on, you're gonna get some nice highlights, you can start bringing the detail out there, which means whatever base you put them on, you're going to get the two things definitely showing as separate elements of the mini. After all, you might spend 95% of your time working on the model 5% of the time working your base. By doing this, we get the audience, the people looking at our miniature, to better see the entirety of the model. Everything you've done that you've put your time and effort into, they will see. Now, some of you might be thinking, but hang on, Jay. If we look at his thigh, we can see that you've done the highlight to the top. And this is true. 
And there are some exceptions to this rule. Essentially anything that just really wouldn't look right if you did the highlight towards the bottom. Like for instance, this thigh plate where the way the miniature is stood, the fact that you've got a sort of sharp ridge where there will be a highlight there anyway, you'd overload one point of the miniature and it just wouldn't really look right. Other notable exceptions and common exceptions for this are things like knee pads where you have a rounded surface and everyone kind of knows how light works off of a reflective spherical-ish surface. So you have to do that. The same goes for Primaris ankle joints, those little balls that they have on the side of their feet in case terrain is uneven in the battlefields of the 41st millennium. And then another common one is areas that have got a concave surface with a harsh angle. So think the armor plates of things like Sisters of Battle, where they tend to sort of just flow inwards and then kick around at the bottom. That's you'd have a nice harsh highlight. You can't really highlight what would pretty obviously be a shadow. So now let's look at the top half of the miniature. On the top half of the miniature, you tend to bring your highlights towards the top of each surface. This means that things like the shoulder pads and so on are gonna get nice and bright the further up the model they go. The backpack is going to have a nice set of highlights on it. But again, there are some common exceptions. For me, highlights on things like a Space Marine helmet shouldn't be at the top of the head, but they should instead be just where the V comes in on their helmet, because that draws the eye to the middle of the face of the miniature, which is where a lot of detail and a lot of expression comes from. Other exceptions are at the backpack on the bottom of it, we need to make sure we've got the highlights there because otherwise the model just looks a bit boring from the back. After all, when this guy's running around a table in the battlefield to the 41st millennium or your local game club, you want the mini to look good when he's charging away from you, for you, right? And the last one is on the backpack for Primaris Marines again. Then there's two little rivet and you wanna make sure you get a highlight there. And that means that when you come into your edge highlights, you get a nice highlight that sort of frames every part of that and it really brings the whole thing together. Believe it or not, backpacks are kind of an important thing to paint well. Who'd have thought it, right? So hopefully that's given you guys a good insight into how I do my highlighting uh, and you can replicate it. Though if you've got any questions, please don't be afraid to ask in the comment section below. I do my absolute best to reply to every comment that's put on the channel, so hit me up. We then base coating everything else with some rhinoxide before taking the airbrush and a very thin one part paint to two parts flow improver mix of Rhinoxide and Xandri dust. This is gonna start bringing up a little bit of a highlight on our cape, our leather cloak kind of deal that this guy's wearing. And it's gonna introduce it very softly. We're then gonna take some Steel Legion Drab and add that to the mix and do the same highlights again to again, bring that brightness out. And then finally, one last one with Menoth White Base, but this time much, much thinner. This is gonna give it a very soft look it gives you a really nice sort of flowing uh, cape without having anything that's like super harsh. Personally, I don't like that look. We're then taking some Thamar black and you can use any good black. We're gonna a very thin mix again, two parts flow improver, one part paint, and we're reestablishing the shadows. Now this helps with the overspray that we've had using that brown. We can eliminate almost all of it at this point. Now we're taking some dark tone and we're hitting this into all of our recess. And it's very important with my highlight style that you get every single recess shade because we've airbrushed a lot and it's left one value over the entire surface, regardless of how we've put our shades and so on, we need to do this to bring all that detail back. And what a massive difference this recess shade has made. We're then taking some Incubi Darkness, the Fang and Administrator and Grey, so all of the colors that we used earlier on. And we're starting to hit this guy with some brushed edge highlights. The trick to good edge highlighting is for me to keep them minimal. So don't draw boxes all over the miniature a la the Evie Metal Team. Put your highlights on as and where they need to be. So be selective, use the highlights to enhance contrast and to snap detail into focus and try and put as few on as possible. It's very easy to add another highlight here and there, but it's less easy to take it away. 
For the bone, we're base coating everything with Steel Legion Drab. Now you will need a couple of coats for this. It's a great paint, it's got a really good pigment, but it doesn't cover particularly well. So take your time, build up two passes, get all the bone coated with this. Doesn't matter if it's skulls, the bone on the shoulder plates, the bone on his face, whatever it might be, get a nice solid foundation for your base coats here. We're then adding some Menoth White base, thinned with water to almost a glaze. You want to have something that just like we did on our leather cape is very soft and it's going to give you a nice smooth progression up with your highlights. We then add in a little bit more of that Menoth White base, keep going, keep glazing, keep bringing everything up to a nice bright bone before we add in some Menoth White highlight, which is a much brighter bone, again, thinned down close to a glaze to bring up these bone structures in a really nice bright way. It's going to be as maximum departure from the model. Then you add in another bit of that highlight, but don't thin it quite as much. Now you want some control just to hit the final edges and really snap everything into focus. By doing this, you get those soft transitions throughout the model and then a nice harsh highlight to really enhance the detail and bring everything to the fore. For things like the eyes, we're giving them a base coat of Kador Red Base and Thamar Black. It's my favorite way of painting red. Start with something really dark, but still very definitely red, and then build it up through a section of reds and oranges using, in this case, Kador Red Base for our first highlight, and then adding in some flash kits yellow and just building that through till we get something that's nice and bright. Now with marine eye lenses, there's a couple of things to be aware of. First, you need to have a nice dark area at the bottom, which separates the lens from the helmet, even if you haven't painted a skull face on it. The other thing to do is to make sure your marine doesn't look cross-eyed, despite the fact you can't see his eyes. So your highlights must both be in the same sort of place, one on each lens. Otherwise, he's going to look a little bit like Steve Buscemi. You don't want that. Add in some mouth white base for all of the little bits of like stitching and everything that puts his cloak together. And we're also going to be using this to start the highlights on the cloak itself. Now for this, I've thinned it a little bit more to give us a nice softer highlight. We're also restricting these brush strokes to absolute tiny thin brush strokes. What we don't want is a load of really big bold edge highlights all over the place. We want something a little bit softer. So keep your paint a lot thinner. Keep your brush strokes as precise as you can and just hit the absolute highest points on all of this. By the time you've done this and the next step, which would be to introduce some scratches and a little bit of kind of not really battle damage, but just some wear and tear, then the whole thing will start to come together. The soft highlights we did earlier on with our airbrush will really help to marry everything through and these brighter, harsher stripes that we're doing now will give us a nice solid look to our mini. Now here we've put him on his snow base, we've done the flames and everything else, which like I said, you can find on both our Patreon video on how to freehand the flaming skulls, but also on YouTube, how to do a couple of snow bases. So the last thing we're doing is some OSL on the backpack. Uh, same way we did the eyes, I've got some Kador Red base and some Thamar Black. We've thinned that right down, we're painting into just the recesses of this area where we want the light to come from. Then we're going to thin that right down to a glaze and start glazing that on all around that area. The whole point of doing OSL, or object source lighting, is that a glow effect is cast onto other elements of the miniature. Keep this restrained, don't go crazy with it. This is one of those less is more kind of things, and you can always go back in and add more later on, but it's very difficult to remove. So keep it close to the light source. Now the light source itself needs to be brighter than everything else. So we work through the same progression we did earlier on. We use that Kador red base, that nice bright, bold, vivid red to again, paint in those lines in between the vents in this sort of furnace-like backpack. We're adding in some flash gets yellow, getting to a nice orange warm glow here. And again, keep doing this. Every single brush stroke you put on past that first one should be ever so slightly smaller until you get right down to the bottom. We've got some more flash gets yellow going in there for a nice bright orange, but importantly, not yellow. And we're just sort of hitting the lowest parts before finally a tiny little peak highlight with a nice warm orange again by adding more flash gets yellow to the mix. And that's pretty much it. That's how to highlight a space marine my way. Please ignore the cat hair in that picture. It's how to get a nice, really interesting black foil marine's armor and a good tutorial on how to paint bone. Please also ignore that green dot on the skull. I didn't see it until post. 
Thanks very much for watching. If you liked the video, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Peace out, everyone. Now we did this from a few places on the miniature. We used the same sort of technique to, uh, oh, hang on, we've forced this up entirely.